And welcome to High School Physics Explained, and today I'm going to do a quick video about the nature of electric fields, what they are, and how we draw them. So to start off, we're going to introduce a small charge. And here I have a positive charge, and it's going to be, let's say, one nanocoulomb, not very big. How do we know that there's an electric field around this charge? Well, if it has an electric field around it, that is, if it's charged, then we know if we bring other charges in the area, then those charges are going to experience a force. The closer they are, of course, the stronger the force. Now, this can be attraction or repulsion. So if, for example, I bring a positive test charge, for example, near this, we know that this guy is going to experience a repulsive force and it's going to push it away. But if I bring a negative test charge in the area, we know that force is going to be pulled in. Again, that force will be stronger the closer they are together and will be weaker the further we are apart. But in these two cases, you can see that the field around here will cause a charge to move in one of two ways, depending on what you use to test the field with. And so traditionally, what we now do is we say that the test charge, that we test the field around this charge, and let's call this our electric field sensor, is traditionally a positive test charge. And so if I place this test charge close to here, you're going to see it's going to experience a very large force in the direction pushing it away. But if I take my electric field sensor and place it further away out the other side, you're going to see that this force is considerably weaker. It's going away but it's the arrow representing the vector of the force is now considerably weaker. This force is actually due to Coulomb's law, and we won't go into this right now, but generally speaking, this is a force that is dependent on the distance by the inverse square relationship. So in other words, if I double the distance, then the force reduces by a factor of four. As you can see, as I put more test charges around, you'll notice that all of these arrows are pushed away. And so this field could be described as a whole series of arrows that show the direction of a test charge will go. Or more accurately, it will show you the force acting on that test charge. If I now actually place on the electric field, you can see I have a series of arrows here. If we were to be totally accurate, you would understand that these regions here show no arrows. That's not to suggest that there is no force here. It's just simply a way of representing the field. So that those lines actually don't exist, they're imaginary. Now, in this particular animation, and I again uh, thankful for the University of Colorado's uh, FET team who developed these animations, you'll notice that the, the opacity of these arrows change, and that's supposed to represent the strength of the field. Now, if I were instead of using these arrows here, and I actually draw in my own arrows, then what I can do is I would draw an arrow, in this case, that would show the same aspect. And I would draw straight lines, like so, that do the same thing. And so I have now a series of arrows that represent the field. Traditionally, they're drawn a little bit more symmetrically. But the point is, is that the arrows represent the electric field and what a test charge, which is positive, would have a force exerting on it. The other thing to note too, is that the further the lines are apart, the weaker the field. So in this circle here, the lines are relatively close. So we say the field is relatively strong. At this level, the lines are much further apart. And so now what we have is a much weaker field out here. So now let's have a look what a negative test charge will exhibit in terms of its field. Well, again, the electric field, do you know what direction the force will be? Well, of course, the force will be inwards. And so the arrows will point in towards the charge that we are discussing. Again, the closer the test charge, the stronger the force. 
and so this force is considerably stronger. And again, as you move it around, you can see that these arrows always point inwards. If I put on the animations link, you can see all these arrows point inwards. If I were to draw them, then I would actually draw arrows that point inward to my test charge. So all my arrows are now pointing towards my negative test charge, trying to, oops, trying to draw them as accurately as I can. You can see that all my arrows are straight, relatively speaking, and pointing inwards. Strictly speaking, these arrows should always uh, touch the charge at right angles because the force will always be perpendicular to the surface and there shouldn't be any gaps. And secondly, these arrows should never overlap each other and I'll discuss the impact of that shortly. But again, the lines are closer together, close to the charge, further apart, the further away we are, hence the weaker the field. So summarizing, the arrows represent the force a test charge will experience at any point in that field. And of course, it can be repulsive if this is a positive test charge or attractive if, as in this case, it's a negative test charge. But now let's examine this field if we were to put in two different charges. What would the field look like? Well, let's look at our electric field sensor and bring it in close to my positive charge. And of course, that force is really strong. But as I move it away, notice that the arrow not only gets weaker, it actually changes direction. And so as I move this across, you can see that I have the arrow now becoming more and more stronger towards the negative charge. So why is the arrow, for example, horizontal in this perspective? The point is, is that the electric field lines that we draw must represent the net force acting on our test charge. So in this specific point here, this test charge is experiencing a force due to the red positive charge in that direction. But it is also experiencing an attractive force due to the negative test charge in that direction. And so now this test charge is experiencing two forces, one repulsive due to this charge, one attractive due to this charge. So the force that this test charge is experiencing is actually the net force acting on the test charge, not just one force. If I were to get a second charge, test charge, and I place it here, what direction will it go? Well, it could go it's in this direction. Can we explain this using our vectors? Well, the force due to this guy is going to be relatively weak in that direction. The force due to this one is going to be relatively strong in that direction. And as a result, you can see that this vector is approximately the sum of these two vectors. What therefore will the field look like in this case? You can see is that it arcs around and it is due to the fact that it is experiencing two separate forces due to the fact we have two separate charges. If I were to draw this as accurately I can, and of course the force between this and this indirectly in between will be a straight line. The force will always be in that direction. But remember, the force along here is ultimately always equal to the sum of the two forces that the test charge is experiencing. But as I move away, this is going to arc around. Remember, it leaves and arrives at right angles. It'll look something like this. Notice the arrows always leave the positive chest charge and arrive at the negative chest charge, simply because my test charge is always going to be a positive test charge. And if I continue to draw this along, and of course, this is not some totally accurate and precise, but you get the trend. 
that this is going to be the case the way we draw our fields. Again, this is going to come across like this. This would, of course, continue over the top. Same over here. I have an arrow arriving this, and this would come over like this. Strictly speaking, it could go right around like so to represent the field. Now, I could draw more lines, and of course, these lines should continue on. So we can just draw that along so that it continues on. It's not totally precise. Remember, these lines can't be broken, strictly speaking, because that seems to suggest that there's no field. We are not suggesting, of course, there's no field in between these lines. This is supposed to simply represent what the field would look like. Again, I make the point that if we were to look at this area here, where we have relatively close lines, the field is relatively strong. But here, of course, the lines are relatively spaced out, so therefore the field is relatively weak. Finally, let's have just a quick look what the field looks like when I have two of the same charges. What will the field look like in this case? Taking our electric field sensor, which is a positive test charge, of course, it's going to be highly repulsive over here. It's going to also be repulsive over here. Right in the middle, of course, if I were to draw the vectors in this case, we would get, of course, a repulsive force in that direction due to this charge, and in that direction due to this charge, and we would get, of course, the net force acting up like so. But what about directly in the middle? Notice what we get. We get no force whatsoever. What's going on? It is still experiencing forces, but in this case, the two forces are in opposite direction. And so if they're in opposite directions, but are the same strength, because at this particular point, it is midway between these two charges, the net force here is zero. And so in essence, we have no electric field directly in between these two test charges. And so if you have of the same charge on either side, there is an area of space where there is no electric field. There is no force going to be experienced on any charges. So if I turn the field on, you can see that it is relatively weak here. In fact, it's zero right in the middle. How do we draw this? Well, we draw this, generally speaking, like this. We have an arrow going up this. It goes strongly up like so. Similarly speaking, it's going to be an arrow like this and strongly up like so. On the other side, we do the same thing. And then we continue our drawings along. Remember, these are the lines of net force. So these would go up, but be pushed away slightly. And so we have this region of space in between the two test charges where the electric field is zero. I will make a point here. It is zero directly in the midpoint. It is not completely zero in these regions just around it. But the point I want to make is, is that it progressively gets weaker and weaker and weaker until we're at that midpoint. That actually has applications. That'll be a discussion of another video. What will the one, what will the diagram look like, of course, if these are negative test charges? Well, it'll be identical, except that the arrows will now be going in towards the negative test charges. I hope that helps you draw electric fields a little bit better. Finally, we need to draw one diagram more. What about two plates? So I have a positive plate up here and a negative plate down like so. So this is negatively charged and this is positively charged. What will the electric field look like? Well, because the distances between these two plates is the same, then the force that my electric field sensor will experience at any point along here will be in the same direction always. And so as a result, we will always draw arrows that are going perpendicular. They're always perpendicular to the actual charge plate. But because of the fact that these lines are perpendicular and never actually get closer to each other or further away from each other, then we describe this as a uniform 
electric field. And for all intents and purposes, the field is constant. The, the force, no matter where you place your test charge, will always be the same. If I wanted to be a little bit more accurate, then this would curve a little bit at the edges because the plate doesn't continue. So there isn't a uniform electric field at the edges of the plates. But traditionally, the plates are significantly longer than the separation between the two plates and therefore any uniform plates that are opposite in charge will have a uniform electric field. I hope that has helped you understand a little bit how to draw electric field diagrams. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.